take a gander at the great outdoors. Get a whiff of the wild flowers and flourishing fauna. And don't forget to grab your hiking boots as we gear up for an earthy episode. Pack your fishing poles in your backpacks and prepare to pitch your tents as we contemplate camping on this week's episode of FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. You got it. Hello, 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 and welcome to another exciting edition of FYI. I was just looking at it over here on my records, and I can't believe it, but we are in the fourth season, and we are just humming along. To hum along, estamos moviendo. To hum is mm, mm, mm. But also, when we think about humming, we think of an engine. But wait a second. That's the cars episode. I think today we're going to talk about camping. If you haven't figured it out, I'm excited. I love camping. I've always been a happy camper. And this is a, an expression. We'll start right off with an expression. If somebody is a happy camper, it's another way of saying that they are a happy customer or a happy person. And sometimes we use it in the negative I'm not a happy camper. So we have a lot of expressions that have to do with camping and the great outdoors. And we're going to take a look at a lot of those expressions throughout today's episode. So let's clear something up before we get started. I know in Spanish you say, vamos a un camping. Well, for us, that's not the noun. The noun would be a campsite, campgrounds, And the verb is to go camping, as we've seen many, many times in the past. To go hiking, to go camping, to go kayaking. We usually use this structure with activities. So just remember, we don't say, I'm going to a camping this weekend. You can say, I'm going to go camping. But the place is a campsite or a camp ground. All right. Well, we cleared that up. Why don't we take a look at the intro? Because as always, there is a lot of vocabulary in there on purpose. I started out by saying, take a gander. And this is another way of saying, echa un vistazo. Take a look. But I wanted it to sound good with the great outdoors. So I said, take a gander at the great outdoors. Que es el exterior, no? La vida exterior. The great outdoors. It's another way of saying nature. And I think we looked at this in our National Parks episode. Then I said, get a whiff, un olorcillo, a whiff of the wild flowers. And I think wild, you say silvestres, or también salvaje, the wild flowers and flourishing fauna. And I know you know the word fauna. The only thing is we pronounce it a little bit different in English. We don't say fauna, we say fauna. And to flourish is florecer. So floreciente o prospero would be flourishing. Great word there. And then I went on to say, don't forget to grab. Este verbo lo usamos siempre en inglés. Grab, agarra, coge, grab your hiking boots, las botas de senderismo, as we gear up. And this is, I did this on purpose because gear is el equipo, lo que necesitas. Para ir a hacer camping. But also to gear up for something is to prepare for it. And I said we're gearing up for an earthy episode. Pronounce that word with me. Earthy. Yeah, I know it's a difficult one. That's why I chose it. And earthy is, uh, ¿qué tiene que ver con la tierra, evidentemente? I think you guys could figure that one out on your own. And then we heard a shovel. 
or a spade, right? A spade son estas palas pequeñas que usamos en el jardín. And remember, we have a very common expression, let's call a spade a spade, es las cosas por su nombre. So you heard a spade or a shovel, well yeah, we were digging a pit, a fire pit, and the word to dig is cavar. But we'll talk about some of the traditions a little bit later as well, sitting around the campfire. But the word dig, I wanted to highlight this as well, the word dig also means me gusta. So remember this expression here, I don't dig digging holes. No me mola, no me gusta cavar agujeros. <laughs> hey, I know it's a ridiculous sentence, but if it helps you remember this word, great, because there are so many words in English with double meanings. And then I said pack, which is empaquetar. We don't say to make the suitcase or to do the suitcase. We say pack. And then I said your fishing poles. What are your fishing poles? Cañas de pescar, I think you say. You can also say a fishing rod, a fishing rod or a fishing pole. And your backpacks, las mochilas. Again, if you're British, take your ruck sack. They use the German word. And prepare to pitch your tents. And a tent es una tienda de campaña. And to pitch, I think from the context you can figure out means poner. Poner la tienda de campaña. Pitch your tents as we contemplate camping. So, are you guys ready? Have you got all your gear? Well, don't worry. We're going to go through our gear checklist a little bit later on. But let's start as we always do with a broad or general definition of camping because we can get a lot of vocabulary just by defining what we're talking about. So let's see what Wikipedia says. And remember, you have to trust everything you read on Wikipedia. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But this is pretty straightforward. Straightforward is que no hay mucho rodeo aquí. It says, camping is an outdoor activity involving overnight stays. So, un alojamiento, pero de noche. Te quedas la noche. You sleep over. It's an overnight stay away from home, lejos de casa o fuera de casa, either without shelter. Now, shelter is like a house, a place to protect you. Or using basic shelter, such as a tent or a recreational vehicle. And we'll talk about all the different kinds of camping a little bit as well. Then they go on to say, typically participants leave, se marchan, they leave developed areas to spend time outdoors right? Because we spend a lot of time indoors. If you're like me, you're in the studio all day, you're in the office, you're in front of a screen, your body is begging you to go outdoors. And everybody is in pursuit of more of a natural atmosphere. And we'll talk about some of the activities that people can do to enjoy their time outdoors. And it goes on to say it can be an educational experience. Sure, Nature, how much can we learn from nature? And then there's a little distinction here. It says the night or more spent outdoors, que se pasa afuera, distinguishes camping from day tripping, because a day trip is like what we do here in Madrid. If you go to Segovia, you can go and come back in the same day. Another popular activity, which is similar, but you don't spend the night, picnicking. These are more short term, whereas camping, you're going to go there and you're going to stay for at least one night. I'd like to trace the origins of camping. Like, when did camping start? This is one of the first questions I ask myself when we get into any topic. Where did it all begin? And there are many answers. It's never a black and white answer. But one of the first recorded mentions of a tent is in the Bible. Okay, Genesis 420, Jabal or Jabal, I don't know how to say his name, described as a guy as the first to live in tents. So there it is, guys. They were camping back in the biblical times. 
But really, modern camping as we know it, because I imagine a lot of those people, well, they were on the go. They were nomads. Some of them were camping because, well, they didn't have another choice, right? It's not like they had a mansion in Jericho, if you catch my drift. So when did it become popular as a recreational activity? Well, this was in the early 20th century, where it became popular with elites. So that's people with a lot of money. And with time, it grew in popularity to other socioeconomic classes. And that happens with everything. If you think about air travel, right? First, it's the wealthy, and then it becomes accessible to everyone. So they could say the early 20th century is when it became a fad or a trend for the first time. And a lot of people say that a British traveling tailor, say that five times fast, a tailor is un sastre, and obviously traveling means he's on the go. Well, a guy named Thomas Hiram Holding is said to be the guy who is the godfather or grandfather, if you will, of camping. But they say that uh, that's a nice story and all that, and you know, you want to have a nice figurehead. But really, it was popular before Thomas Hiram Holding. And it's because people used to camp on the River Thames in the UK. And by the 1880s, there were large numbers of visitors who took part in this pastime. So again, when did it really start? Well, you could say the Bible or even before. But when did it become popular? Well, for the sake of easiness, let's say the early 20th century. And I think camping now is more popular than ever, especially because of all the different options that are available. For example, let me give you an example from the United States. Over 42 million Americans go camping each year. That is 14% of the population. It's also a key part of many youth organizations. So if you think about the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, I mean, they have camping trips. I remember going on some of those camping trips. And if you guys want to hear about my own camping experiences, when I went as a kid in the U.S., and also when I went camping at festivals, which is another form of of camping. I'll tell you some of my success stories and some of my horror stories, and we'll do that in the bonus episode. Remember, guys, every week there's a bonus episode that's available exclusively for patrons. Well, unless you're a very patient person and you wait until I release it, which I have released a lot of episodes from the first and second season. But if you want it, when it comes out, you can consider becoming a patron. And for as little as three euros a month, you can have access to that bonus content, starting with a bonus episode. And you can even get PDFs, so you can follow along with this episode and the bonus episode. Plus, my other students, my higher level students, my super duper students, and my interstellar students, well, they join me in a weekly class and a monthly class. So if you do the math, that's five classes a month with me. If you're interested or just want to find out more information, you can go over to patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso, but my students are the proof. You can talk to any of my patrons and you can see that they're all making amazing progress. So keep up the good work, patrons. I want to send a shout out to all of you, especially my super duper students, Javier, Roberto, David, Jose Maria, Mila, Alex, Patricio, and Edgar. And don't forget about my interstellar students, Isa, Paco, Diego, and Carmen. You guys are kicking butt 
and taken names. If you guys want to get more information or find out how you can be a part of our curious community, go over to patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. And if you're not sure, let me know and I can send you a little sample. Let's get back to camping. As I said now, we've got camping with youth organizations. We've got camping for festivals, music festivals, air shows. What about the army, el ejército? I mean, think about how important their campsites are. They have hospitals on their campsites. So these are even, in some cases, somebody's livelihood. Now, today we're going to focus mostly on recreational camping. All right, so let's go through our checklist. What are we going to need when we go on our camping trip? Well, it depends. It depends on the person because some people like to pack light in general and some people like to pack the kitchen sink, como decimos. Unless you really want want to literally sleep under the stars, you're going to need a tent. Una tienda de campaña. You'll also need some steaks. No, no digo chuletones, aunque, yeah, pack those too. But I mean estacas. They, they're homophones. They sound exactly the same. Lo que no puedes decir es steak tartar. No, it's steak. Suena exactamente como estaca. So you'll need a tent, you'll need some stakes, maybe a hammer, or you can just grab a nearby rock. What about uh, sleeping bags? Sure. Okay, maybe in the summer you won't need one, but if you're camping out, remember at night it can get a bit chilly, even in the spring and in the fall. So you're going to want to have a sleeping bag, maybe even some long johns. Long johns is another way to say long underwear, this thermal underwear, which believe it or not, that stuff works. Es que funciona. And of course, bring a couple changes of clothes because, well, if you go on a hike and you fall into a brook, a brook, uh, a little river, Riachuelo, I think you say. Well, you might get your shoes wet, you might get your shirt, your pants, so always have a change of clothes or two. I'd say even an extra one. So if you're staying three nights, grab a fourth change of clothes, just in case. Hiking boots are really good too because, well, they can take a beating. Aguantan muchísimo. Then don't forget your canteen. You'll need some water to stay hydrated, right? Also, I'd say bring a nice bottle of scotch, right? Some nice scotch whiskey that you can pass around the fire later on. But don't forget the water. You'll need some water. You'll also need a lantern or a flashlight. Now, in American English, a flashlight is la linterna que tienes en la mano, la de toda la vida. You know, the one you have in your house, the, one, the common one. And a lantern is like the one that, you know, you carry and it usually, the old lanterns had a candle in them. But now you can buy lanterns that run on gas or LED lights. But that's the difference in the way you hold them, the lantern versus the flashlight. You'll also need a compass. Well, if you're going to go on a hike, on a, a nature walk, como decimos, me encanta los nature walks. Esto es un paseo. Pero lo que vienes a hacer es, pues, eh, describir lo que ves. You know, you're describing, you're observing. We call it a nature walk. And be careful with the pronunciation there. It's not natur or natur, it's nature. So you'll need your compass unless you have a, your phone with you. But you might need service and you could run out of battery. And uh, really, do you want to be using your phone when you're out there in the great outdoors? I don't. I mean, if you need it, you need it. But I think I'm going to put my phone away on this trip because the phone is a double-edged sword, right? It's great because if we get lost or if we need to call somebody, we have it on hand. But also, when you're checking what direction you're walking in, you might want to post a picture on Instagram. And that's okay, but part of the reason we go camping is to disconnect. Or as a good friend of mine said, why do we go to the great outdoors? To disconnect? No, to reconnect with what's important, nature. Also sunblock, 
Oh man, you don't want to get sunburn out there. That could really ruin your trip. Mosquitoes. Oh God, I hate mosquitoes. And for some reason, they love me. They love my blood. So bring some mosquito repellent. I think I'm running out. Me estoy quedando sin ellos. So if you guys could bring some extra mosquito repellent, especially if we decide to go to Canada on our camping trip. Well, Canada is home to more than 57,000 different species of insects. So yeah, mosquito repellent. We can also call it bug spray. And then you want to be careful because then there are bugs and there are bugs. And the ones I'm referring to in this case is a tick garrapata. So that's another one that you got to be really careful. I grew up in nature, as many of you guys know, and that was a reality. In fact, I, I know a few people who caught Lyme disease from a camping trip or from being out in the woods. So don't underestimate, uh, you know, these things, these first aid products. And that's another thing you should have, a first aid kit. You know, you never know when you'll need a Band-Aid, una tirita, if you get mauled by a bear. <laughs> Well, a Band-Aid is not going to help you if you get mauled by a bear. And I was looking into it, and I know what you'd think. You'd think, well, what, are, what is the leading cause of injuries or deaths when people are camping? And you'd think, well, animal attacks. Nope, not at all. It's Number one is drowning. Que se ahogan. So drowning is number one. Falling and car accidents. So, well, remember, to get to these national parks, you have to drive there. And, well, sometimes these RVs, these trailers can be big, especially if you're not used to driving bigger vehicles. So I didn't, I would never think that if you told me to list what are the three most common injuries or things that happen when people go camping? Well, I would think, okay, they get uh, sunburn, maybe I would say. No, se queman al sol. Um, they get uh, attacked by an animal, and no, drowning, falling, and car accidents. <laughs> oh, man, that was uh, quite surprising, to say the least. Um, we said before a spade or a little shovel, right? That's important, too. If you need to dig a hole, maybe you might have to go to the bathroom. Okay, number one, que es orinar, well, you can just find a tree or a bush. But uh, number two, you want to move far away from the campsite, dig a little hole, and uh, bring some toilet paper. I don't personally like to use leaves to wipe my butt. Why? I'm allergic to certain plants, and you don't want to know what happens to me if I wipe my butt with poison ivy. Let's move on to the next topic because whew, not only is it graphic, it's also painful. So that's another thing that's high on my list. TP, baby. What is TP? Toilet paper. But you know what? You want me to be really honest? I don't even bring toilet paper because I don't go camping if there's no outhouse or plumbing nearby. Now, an outhouse or these little portable bathrooms that you find, right? An outhouse. Well, not really. A porta john is the, the portable ones that you'll find at a festival. And an outhouse are the ones that you'll find, you know, that they used back in the day before they had plumbing. So I'll need some kind of space to do my business. Because you know the expression, when nature calls. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's a big, big issue for me, even more important than the sunblock, because, well, I'll just put on my baseball cap and I'll protect myself that way and I'll wear long sleeves. But if I got to go to the bathroom and I don't have the right accommodations, it could be pretty dangerous for everybody involved. <laughs> We'll also need provisions. So we'll need some food if we're spending the night and a way to prepare that food. So we might need a Bunsen burner or I think what we said before was a great idea. We'll start a little bonfire and we'll use it to cook and then we'll use it to roast marshmallows. And we'll be taking a look at some of those traditions in a little bit because what would a camping trip be without roasting marshmallows around the campfire? It's indispensable. It's a must. So we got to bring food. We got to bring some goodies, 
provisions, as we say, trail mix. ¿Sabéis lo que es trail mix? Trail mix is this thing that they give you when you order a copa, a mixed drink here in Spain, and it has corn nuts, kikos, it has pieces of pretzel, it has frutos secos, nuts. It's like a little bit of everything, and it supposedly gives you energy. Oh, and don't forget your knife, not just to protect yourself against those bears out there, but also, uh, well, just in case you need to cut something, a piece of fabric, a tree branch. So that's another one, a pocket knife. A pocket knife is el pequeño que cabe, evidentemente, en el bolsillo. Oh, and don't be a litter bug. No seas uno que tira la basura al lado de la, de la carretera. O no al lado de la carretera, donde no debe ir. That's to be a litter bug. The verb is to litter. So don't litter. Bring a trash bag or as many as you need with you. Because if it comes in with you, it should leave with you, right? That's the general rule about taking care of our national parks and campgrounds around the world. And as we said, you know, camping is just part of it. There are so many activities. We said you can take a hike, que significa vete a tomar viento, go take a hike, a nature walk. Some people like rock climbing. You got water sports such as kayaking, canoeing. I remember I remember once when I went camping, we went white water rafting con em, embalse, I think you say. That was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Fishing, very common activity, especially if you're going to eat what you catch. Do you know what I caught last time I went fishing? A cold. <laughs> Un resfriado. Yeah, I never catch anything. And then, I know, some people don't like water. Hey, I understand it. Mm, call it respect. Well, there are many other activities that you can do that don't have to do with water, such as archery, right, with a bow and arrow. Those are very common. Or simply kicking around a soccer ball or tossing around a football. The idea is to keep yourself busy out in nature. And hey, not all activities have to be physical. You can just read a book, you know? That, that's a cool thing to do, reading a book at Yosemite. That must be a, a different experience altogether. And now we're going to wrap up the first part of today's show, talking about a couple traditions. And then in the bonus part, as I said, we're going to talk about some of the best places to camp out. I'll tell you a little bit about my experiences camping. We'll look at some camping movies and songs, some idioms as well. And we'll talk about the therapeutic side of camping as well. So, so much to do in the bonus part. But as I said, It's not a camping trip if you don't bring marshmallows. And you can make s'mores. What are s'mores? Well, these are cookies with marshmallows and chocolate. Yeah, you melt the marshmallow, you put it between the cookies, and you dip it in chocolate. Does that sound yummy to you? <laughs> well, you know why we call it s'mores? Because, can I have some more? Can I have some more? Some more? <laughs> can I have some more s'mores? <laughs> because they're that good. But remember, starting a campfire isn't easy. You got to go find that firewood and then you have to kindle it. This is an interesting word because it's a word you're all familiar with because there's a, well, these e-readers are called Kindle. But to kindle a fire, a fire, excuse me, is encender o prender. So that's a word you were all familiar with, but you didn't know it had something to do with fire and camping. And I said the word to bonfire before. A bonfire, I think you say hoguera. It normally means a bigger fire. A lot of times we talk about a fire pit as well. The fire pit is un agujero, un hueco is a pit. And you got to be really careful with this stuff because, well, it's not just an idiomatic expression. If you play with fire, you'll get burned. It's true. And you could start a forest fire. And uh, we've all seen on TV, those are not easy to put out. Apagar. One word I like when we're talking about fire because, well, you're right no matter how you say it. Something is either flammable or inflammable. It means the same exact thing. But folks, let's be honest. There's nothing like that night sky. Escaping everyday life and embracing the outdoors. 
Sleeping Under the Stars. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part, and I hope you are happy campers, and that you'll join us in the bonus episode of today's FYI.